Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to build out a project schedule from scratch. This video is aimed for people that have never used Microsoft Project before, but uh, as you see from my video library I have a whole bunch of more advanced stuff. This is really back to basics, start from scratch, I've never used it before and I, I have a job to do. If you're after that, you're in the right place. Alright, so we have launched Microsoft Project. The first thing I've done is come in and clicked on new blank project. You can use a template if you like. But I'm going to show you how to create one from scratch. So we click new blank project and we see this page. First thing you want to do is actually save the project, right? So you're not going to lose any work. Save it. Let's put it on my PC, on my desktop. I'm going to call it ABC project. All right. Then we see the name of the project at the top, ABC project. Next thing I want to do, kind of give you a quick introduction to the interface. So this is a view in Microsoft Projects, the default view is called the Gantt chart view. Here we can put in task names, durations, start date, finish date, predecessors. Now in here, the first thing you want to do is put in the task name. Think of this as an Excel spreadsheet, but much cooler than that, right? So it's kind of a cross between an Excel spreadsheet and an access database. You'll see why as I start doing things. So I'm going to put in a new task. It'll be very, very simple here. Task one, task two. You notice straight away task mode. You see this it's saying manually scheduled tasks. What this means is that you're responsible for maintaining everything on that task. That's not what we want to do, and it is the default out of the box. We want to switch that to auto schedule auto schedule I'll talk more about that a little bit later on and I'm actually going to come down the bottom left hand corner and make all new tasks auto schedule so now you can see on the Gantt chart it's given me a default duration start and finish date if I had task 3 here it would and it was manual you see it doesn't give you any of that right in fact <laughs> it, it, it does because I already created the task if I hadn't created it you see before it didn't have the duration and the start and the finish dates. So if I create a new one again, manually scheduled, task four, you can see I don't get any of that. Right? So make them auto scheduled and it will give you default durations, start and finish dates. And it allows the scheduling engine to push the tasks around. And you're gonna see that's the power of Microsoft Project, so we don't want to avoid that. You can create milestones in here well, to make a task into a milestone just give it a zero day duration so you've got the tasks milestones and you can have those on the project on the right hand side you have this nice chart it's called the Gantt chart view and you can see your tasks laid out nicely next step give it a duration let's come in here and say well I think this task one's five days ten days two weeks uh, maybe four months you can do whatever you like and obviously a milestone is not going to have any duration it's zero days and you can see that on the Gantt chart it gives you the little label and you can see here my tasks and how they're stretching out in fact you can see this one stretches out a long old way <laughs> so what I'm going to do this is actually in one of my tips and tricks videos and I'll give you a link to that at the end of this video good way to set up Microsoft project but if I click on view entire project I can now adjust the timeline the time scale on the right hand side of that Gantt chart view so I can see my entire project it's like pretty nice you can also select some and click selected tasks but and it will zoom in on the selected tasks but I, I like this entire project view well that's real basic stuff put in the tasks you can see it gives me default duration start and finish dates now where is this start date coming from well, by default, it's today's date. But what I want to do is say, I want this project to start next week. So the first thing I do is come into the project, project ribbon, project information, and I'm going to set the start date to be, let's say, December 7th, and press OK. This is the only date you will ever specify in Microsoft Project. You should never specify anything other than the start date. You might be thinking I'm crazy, and I can understand why. But you're going to see why it's a paradigm shift from Excel. Okay, 
specify the start date, we're going to allow the software to tell us all the other dates. So press OK, you can see all the tasks shifted to 12.7 now. Great. All right, so I've put in my tasks. I've given them the default durations. I can see the start and finish dates for the tasks. The next thing I want to do is tell the scheduling engine the logical order that I want these tasks to be completed in. So I'm going to make this really easy and say I want task one to be completed, then task two. So to do that, I can click on task one, drag down to task two, then go to the task ribbon and click on the link task. It looks like a little chain in the schedule section of the task ribbon. Click on that one. And there we go. These two are now linked together. What's happened here? Well, behind the scenes, task one has been linked to task two. The finish date of task one has been tied logically to the start date of task two. Pretty nice, right? You can see it actually finishes Friday. It skips the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and it will start continuing with that one on Monday, as you'd as you'd as you'd think. Now that's because of the calendar for the project, and we can talk more about that later on. You can adjust that if you wanted a seven-day work week, for example. All right, so we've linked the two tasks together, and you can see the the dates have adjusted automatically. The nice thing about this, if I was to up the duration of task one, boom, task two is pushed out to Tuesday dynamically, right? That's because we haven't specified any dates apart from the start date. We link the two tasks together and we can see that as things shift and move around, we can see the, the negative impacts of our changes or positive impacts potentially, but negative for the most part. <laughs> when you increase in duration, that's not a good thing, but it always, always happens. All right, so that's linking one task to another. You can also come into the predecessors column, do the same thing. I can link the milestone as well. Let's look at that entire project again now. View entire project because obviously we pushed out that duration of the project because we've linked the task together. And there we go. Wouldn't it be nice to see the duration of my entire project right now? Well, I can do that by clicking on the format ribbon. And on the top right hand side, you will see project summary tasks. This is kind of a, it's a, it's a behind the scenes task that comes in and it's actually a summary of the entire project. So it actually says the name of the project, ABC project, duration, start and finish dates. Pretty nice and easy. It's always there, you can remove it, but it is always there in the background. That's actually a project summary task. What I haven't shown you yet is a summary task. So I put in the tasks real quickly and easily and some milestones, but what you can do is illustrate in your project schedule the phases or stages of a project. Most projects have phases, phase one, phase two, or they have names. Let me show you how we can model those in Microsoft Project. So to do that, I'm actually going to right click and insert task. Okay, so I get a new task. I'm going to call this phase one. And you can see here it is, it's above, but it's not a summary task yet. To make a task a summary task, we click on the tasks, and we click on the task ribbon, and in the schedule section of the task ribbon, you'll see this indent task. I click on that, and what you'll see is that task went from a task into a summary task. It's pretty much the same as the, the project right now, but that will change. You can see it's now summarizing all of the tasks that are indented beneath it. Pretty cool. So I can actually roll this up too. Phase one, let's create phase two. And I'm gonna put in here task five, task six, task seven, and then milestone two. And again, I can come in, give it default, uh, nice durations here. You probably see, what does this question mark mean? Well, that means that we've never touched it, right? So it's an estimated estimate, <laughs> estimate of the estimate. But yeah, it just means that if you ever see a question mark, it means we need to adjust this or it's, we've never touched it. You can also actually put in five question mark and then enter as well. It means maybe I need to come back and revisit that. 
It's a nice feature, but if you've never touched it, you'll have that question mark. We'll just put in five days for now and see that. So I can indent these tasks beneath phase two. You notice this time for a milestone, give that a zero day duration, I did not actually indent that beneath phase two. I kept it out uh, I kept it out at the same work breakdown structure level as phase two. That's kind of a styling preference. So that when I roll up my milestones, and my, my summary task I should say, I can now see phase, phase, milestone. In fact, if I come to phase two, one, click on my summary task, uh, sorry, my milestone, and outdent that, I've now got the same styling format for phase one and phase two. It's an option, some people like it, some people don't, totally up to you. And you can see on the Gantt chart what this is now looking like. So we've got our project, our project tasks in here. We know how to create summary tasks, which are collections of tasks. We know how to create the tasks themselves, milestones. A couple of tips here. Do not adjust these dates. When you do that, those dates will be set in stone and a, a constraint will be put on that task. We can talk about that in a later video. But essentially, as soon as I set that task, start or finish date, it'll apply a constraint where that task cannot start any earlier than that date. So if the project gains some time or we start it a week early, that task will be stuck out there. you will be like, why isn't it moving around like the rest of my schedule? Why isn't it fluid? It's because you adjusted these dates. I wish that we'd make these two fields read only. <laughs> It'd be very nice because you've got the option for manually scheduled tasks when you can come in and control those dates but the whole power and the whole concept behind Microsoft Project is the scheduling engine if you adjust those dates you're not going to get that use all right what's next well I want to come in here and link these tasks together too see how those are now pushed out nicely and I can actually link milestone one to task five you'll notice that I jumped over phase two I did that using the control key, so I click on milestone, control key on the keyboard to task five, and then link those. You should never link summary tasks together, because if you do, you could potentially create circular logic. And it's just not a good practice. And also, when you're linking tasks together, or only link a task where a true dependency exists. And if there is no dependency, don't link them together, just mitigate it with resources. That's a whole other story later down the line that we'll get to. All right, so we've put in the tasks now, looking good. We have linked them together, looking good. We've put our fail milestones and summary tasks in. I'm happy with that. So you've got the basic structure of your project now. The next thing you're going to want to do is build out the resources. Okay, to do that, I can come to the resource. That's right, the view ribbon and come to the resource sheet. In here is where I can actually start specifying the resources needed for my project. I'll put in here Tom Henry, Mike, Jones, Mary, Kelly, etc. Now I do have a video on resource planning and how to set up your resource pool, etc. I'll post the link to that at the end of this video. But uh in in to keep that brief, as this is just an intro, the basics, you put the resources in, you specify how much they want per hour, $75, $60, $69, $80. You can also specify an overtime rate, right? So if they get, if they charge more for an overtime rate, you can do that as well. You can also do a cost per use. You can say every time I call out this person, it's a $10 call out fee. There's also other types of resources. So if I actually come in here, I'm going to say bricks. And then the type, I can say, oh, this is a material resource. So if you want to track the materials necessary to complete your project, you can do that. Whenever you create a material resource, you need to give it a material label. So I say, uh, this is pallet of bricks. So I'm going to charge per pallet $300. So I'm building a project, a building a house, I need 10 pallets of bridge, 
and the bridge of bricks it's going to cost me three thousand dollars and I assign the bricks to the relevant task in my project uh, another one let's say I have a contractor and they're going to be working on a particular piece of the project and they're giving it to me at a fixed cost I can use a cost resource for this at this point I don't have to do any other setup because when I assign the resource I can specify how much that resource costs the only thing I can really do here is decide do I want to recruit that cost at the start of the assignment let's say it's a month long deal right do we want them to invoice us on day one and we pay it before they even get on site do we want to prorate it and forecast that cost over time it's good if you're having a really long task or is it we pay at the end we can have the cost accrue at the end for the most part most people go for prorated but it's an option for you that you may want to consider the, the, the same thing applies for work resources but generally they're working a number of hours each week and we're tracking it so prorate is the way to go all right one thing you might want to consider at this point is coming into each of the resources and looking at their calendars that is another video that I'll be creating and that will be a little bit later down the line on how to create calendars in Microsoft Project but we're going to stick with the standard calendar which is 8 to 5 Monday through Friday what I will do is show you how to create exceptions like Christmas and things like that alright so back to my Gantt chart view now that I've got my, my tasks scheduled out I can now specify who I want to work on a given task I could do this in the resource names column I can come in here and say I want Tom to work on task one and Mary now they're both assigned I want uh, Mike Mary to work on that one and for task three I want uh, Tom only that's one way to do it another way is to come in to the resource ribbon click on assign resources select the task that you want to assign the resource to I'm going to click on task 5 or Mike and Tom both so I use the control key to click both of their names and assign both same thing for task 6 I can say oh, I want Mary to work on that one and for 7 and 4 I want the Mary and Mike and Tom to work on those tasks so quickly and easily using this assign resources dialog I can come in and quickly assign those resources and you can see on the Gantt chart it displays the name of the resources assigned to the task now because we've got resources assigned to the project and they have an hourly cost we should be able to see some costs now being accrued for the project I can actually see any column I want in here there is one called cost it tells me how much the projects costing how much phase one is costing phase two and each individual task based on the resources that are assigned etc now let's say this was construction for task four I can come in here assign the contractor to that click assign specify that uh, over that four month period they're going to charge me one hundred thousand dollars click away I've now assigned a hundred thousand dollars to my project as well did that work yes three hundred and forty three thousand so that's the fixed costs you can also do the same thing for materials let's say for task seven this is walls I'm building some walls right now I need some uh, bricks for that assign resources bricks assign how many do we want by default it's going to be one pallet I can up that two three three and a half six and a half click away and we can see the cost is uh, calculated really quickly and easily we can build out a model of how much this project is going to cost how long it's going to take what are the resources that we need that's really the nice basics of Microsoft project now obviously as your project continues you can track project progress to see how long it's going to take uh, how long it's taken how much you've spent etc a couple other things I want to show you before I let you go once you're ready to start the project obviously this is very quick and dirty 
you might want to set a baseline for the project. That takes a snapshot of everything as it stands right now. To do that, project, set baseline, set baseline, and you press OK. I could talk more about this, but I'm just going to press OK. The baseline has now been set. Well, what's happened behind the scenes? <laughs> well, what it's done, Microsoft Project has taken the information in the start, finish, work, cost fields and moved them over to a baseline equivalent. And actually, I can come in here and see the baseline table. I can see that it's got been now been populated. So the baseline start, baseline duration, baseline finish, baseline work, baseline cost for each task has been captured. These figures never change unless I update the baseline. In fact, if I clear the baseline, it's all gone. I'm going to add them back in. Those dates are populated. But when I come back to my entry table, which is the default in Microsoft Project, in the Gantt chart view, the entry table is the default. I can adjust the uh, update the duration of a task. My cost has just gone through the roof, I would imagine now. <laughs> I've added an extra three or four days to that task, so nothing too catastrophic. And actually, nice, you can see this blue highlighting. Because I changed the duration, you can see everything that was affected. So obviously the finish date uh, was pushed out, the overall duration of the project's pushed out, the phases pushed out. Quite a problem there. But you can see that that's happened. But what I wanted to really show you is that the project has been pushed out, the costs have gone up, but the baseline have stayed the same. So um, if I actually come in here, I can visualize on the Gantt chart my baseline as well. Click on the format ribbon and click on baseline and show me baseline. You can see it's been saved. You can save up to 10, 11 baselines, but this one is the one that's most important. It's baseline zero, it's commonly referred to. So you can see as I push out this task, the other tasks that were connected have also been pushed out. If I want to see more information, like how much am I overspending now, I can actually use this variance table. View ribbon, tables, variance. I can see you know, we're going to finish six days late. Another table is the cost table. 7,444 over budget right now. How much is the baseline cost, total cost? Act. Once you start tracking project progress, that's another video in my library. Take a look at that. I'll post the link to that one. Um, you'll be able to see uh, you'll be able to see the actual costs coming in as well once you've tracked the project progress. All right, so this project is ready to get started now. Um, as you start tracking, you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to see what's going on with your project, how much you're spending, and use this as a model to see what's going on down the line to be able to forecast and etc. There's obviously a lot more to Microsoft Project than this. Check back to my other videos. And there's a, ser a whole series of things that I I'd love you for you to see, but this is a quick intro. I hope I this has helped. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please just let me know. Thanks so much.